victory over Maryland. We'll also take a close-up look at the Big Ten in our annual conference preview. And we'll have our scouting report on Wisconsin. All that and more coming up next. Everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines beat Maryland 41-21. They finish up their non-conference record 2-1. And, and friends, I hate to tell you this, but Bo Schembechler has become a passing coach. That's right. He threw it all over the park today in the first half, and I'm a little disappointed in you personally. No kidding. That's right. After you've been brought up in the running game. And to watch you throw it all over the ballpark, I, I got to tell you, I almost <sighs> left the press box. There's a fundamental weakness here. That's right. And uh, I'm trying to do something about it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Elvis Gerback out there throwing the ball and receivers like Greg McMurtry and Chris Calloway, I don't blame you. It's a way to get the ball to some very good players. Well, if the defense is going to um, gang up on you, and particularly on early downs, first down, not let you run the ball, I think you have no choice but to pass it. And fortunately, you know, uh, we can throw pretty decently, and we have excellent receivers. So it just stands to reason that that's the way we should have started the ball game, and that's the way we started it. And basically, taking what the defense gives you, and that's been your philosophy all your career, really. Well, right. When uh, Basically, if they bring the eighth man into the running game, you had better pass. And uh, most teams are going to attempt to do that. Uh, so we'll probably be passing early a lot more frequently. And the situation, you win the toss, decline the well, choice? Well, we, we deferred. Then... We deferred to the second half. Right, and the defense just yeah, gets it Bobby done. Abrams with a great sack. I thought he had some big plays for us early. And um, so then we finally get the ball with field position. This is the first play of the game. And Elvis throws out here to Chris Calloway, who oh, comes close to the Give me that full back off tackle. <laughs> Still an exciting play. You bet, and this one's even more exciting. This is Elvis throwing for the corner here to Chris Calloway for a touchdown, and uh, we take a 7 to nothing lead. And two out of the four plays are pass plays. You get in the end zone, have a 7 nothing lead, and the defense again comes up big. Well, they had, they, this is a third and 21. They hit a pass here. Fortunately, we got a good tackle and a fumble. Got the ball at midfield. Veda Murray caused the fumble. He's had, this is his second big game in a week, in two weeks. Well, that's true. He's uh, he made some plays and uh, that really helped. Here's a uh, great camera angle uh, to Chris Galloway for a curl over the middle, uh, and then uh, Gerbeck comes right back and hits uh, McMurtry again. And you're going to the air because they've got the that's eighth right. man up on the ball. They're showing us, uh, you know, and he comes right back here down the goal line, and McMurtry. Takes it on a, a post route for a touchdown. Players we talked to said that you checked run to pass. They did, huh? Uh-oh, they shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of checking going on in there, Jim. <laughs> Here we scramble again, and uh, Bobby Abrams does a great job of sacking the uh, quarterback. We had quite a few sacks there early, and then I thought our defense played extremely well early, and then later on I thought we tailed off a little bit. Here's a screen pass that we didn't play very well. Um, they get down to our 40-yard line. Uh, this is a pretty good offensive team. I'm surprised they, uh, they move the ball real well. These turnovers helped us early. And here's another fumble that we recover uh, at, a, at a time when they were driving the ball. And you go deep to McMurtry. Go right back, go deep to uh, Greg, who catches the ball, and we're down inside their 25-yard line. And did you know they were going to play the defense up snug with their linebackers? Yes, that just... was our intention, was to throw the ball. Most teams nowadays, Jim, here's Tony Bowles breaking outside on an off-tackle play because they jammed everything there inside. And, um, yeah, the reason that we uh, decided to throw the ball, that, uh, you know, most people are making it difficult for us to run. That was a power sweep by Leroy Horde for a uh, uh, five-yard gain. And here Tony Bowles takes his round right in, dives into the end zone for the touchdown, and we lead 21 uh, At this point, it looks like a little bit of a cakewalk, but as you said, no. their offense is good. They move the ball, they and here's an ball. example. They move the ball real well. Here they hit a curl pass into the sideline at midfield. And this O'Donnell's got himself an arm. I think O'Donnell is an excellent quarterback. Now, this pass was played poorly. Uh, they made a great uh, catch on it for a touchdown. They're back in the game 21 to 7. And then here's your big play to put them uh, really this, down in a hole again. This is a draw play. And uh, it was jammed up on the front side. Tony broke it to the back side. And uh, I think uh, what happened is a couple of those secondary backs uh, took uh, bad pursuit courses, underestimating how fast Tony is. 
And once he got out into the clear, it was a touchdown. Now, I agreed with you watching the game. Maryland moved the ball pretty well after a fashion. Uh, they didn't turn it over. So at 28, seven and a half, you're still not out of the woods. I know you felt that way. Well, I thought in the second period, our defense let down just a little bit. I also felt in the entire first half that we didn't really rush the ball very well at all. Tony broke a 60-some yarder, but that was on a draw play. We weren't really up there blocking and doing a good job running the ball. And the big story, of course, in the game was the passing game, and the passing game makes the receivers a very happy group of guys. We uh, went to the game with a lot of like uh, run pass uh, checks and stuff like that, and they were just giving us a pass. And uh, we went to the game figuring if they were going to give us passes, you know, we were just going to take them. And that's what happened today. Did you know that Buick ranked? Weekend. You know, it wasn't that nobody was, wasn't was giving the effort. It was just that our technique was bad and, uh, you know, we were blocking the wrong people. And so this week we concentrated on that. And then when we got into the game, uh, we showed a little improvement. So Leroy Hort, of course, had a great game running, but that running game didn't happen until the second half. And Bo, probably the reason for that was is that after the first half throwing the football, I think you told them, we're going to get this done on the ground sooner or later, and I'm going to make it start now. Well, it wasn't that as much as uh, I think the uh, Maryland defense realized they had to do a better job of stopping the passing game, and they did. But in the meantime, they gave us a little more running room inside. Did you, and you were interested in getting something done between the tackles, weren't you? Because you'd well, gotten outside a couple of times. That's right. I, th I think it's important for us to be able to run the ball inside. I don't think you can let those people in there stand up and rush your passer. And uh, it's important for us to be able to run. And uh, here opening up the third quarter. We opened up third possession. quarter. That's Leroy Horde. Breaks for a first down over our 40-yard line. And uh, we come right back again and give it to Leroy on a on a sweep and he cuts it back in for good yardage and picks up another first down. So we, we get two quick first downs here. But uh, this is a third and 17, and we decide to go with the deep one, and Greg McMurtry makes a great catch uh, down at the five-yard line, and we're down there to the one-yard line. McMurtry just making a habit of making great catches here. Right. This is Horde on a cross buck, goes in for the touchdown, and it's 35 to 7. The big play is third and 17 when you hit a deep pass like that. I'm sure the coach at Maryland was upset with that. Here, uh, Alan Jefferson, Jefferson made a nice cut there because we missed the block. And, uh, and he came uh, inside that guy and did a great job. Here he breaks outside on a draw play uh, and does some good running. After I was his, happy to get him in the game. Yeah, after his leg a chance problems, to run. You know, it was good right. to see him back in there. We stalled here. and. Uh, and uh, Carlson kicked a 48-yarder, uh, I believe, and uh, that made the score 38-7. to 7. At this point, you had to feel, OK, I got it under control, and I'm moving it on the ground. So now I think that we're a little safer, huh? Right. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, we're fairly safe, but uh, that doesn't mean that we're getting everything accomplished that we want. Here, we're running the football and doing a good job. Uh, Alan Jefferson car carrying most of the time. And then we're third down and three. Uh, down near the goal line, we call for a pass play, and uh, this lad from, um, this Tomlin lad from Maryland intercepts and runs for touchdown. Now, Jim, as this season goes along, it's third down and three on the goal line, and I throw a pass like that. Can I come uh, down and no, talk no. to you? No, <laughs> no. I want you to lead the alumni in replacing me. <laughs> I want you got it. No, one, no coach can be that dumb. <laughs> I, you know, I bet I get some support for that, too. I think you would. You get a lot of support. Here's Bernie Leggett, uh, a freshman fullback on a draw play. Uh, picks up uh, big yardage. This is Leggett again. I think he's going to be a pretty good back. Got in some power. He was yeah. carrying people with him. He was strong and ran well. You go back. Here's a screen pass. I thought Alan Jefferson did a good job. Ran through that tackle. Guy jumped on his back, it's number 40, and he carried him down there for the first down. Uh, we foul this one up, too, and kick another field goal. And uh, so it's 41 to 14. Still pretty much in hand, and now you got your second liners in on the defensive side, and I know this bothers you when you see this. Well, now, here's third and 16. Wouldn't that bother you? Look at this tackling. 
Uh, that's the thing that bothers me. Uh, you put these youngsters in here, you expect them to tackle a little better. And also, we played this terribly, this uh, alley-oop pass for a touchdown uh, for Maryland to make the score uh, 41 to 21. That's the final in the game. You win your non-conference record 2-1. and one. Uh, Do you feel confident about this club as you head into the Big Ten season? I think we're getting better, but, um, you know, I don't know whether we're good enough to win it. Um, we have too many tough games to play out there. Uh, we have Michigan State on the road, Illinois on the road, Iowa on the road, and then, of course, Ohio State in the last game here at home. Uh, those will be the four big ones. But we can't take any of these others lightly because we're not good enough to say that we can just go out there and this other team's going to roll over dead. One of the questions about entering into the conference schedule, uh, maybe some of the injuries. Now, two guys come to mind, Jared Bunch and Michael Taylor, the quarterback. Uh, how are they in their progress? I see no change in their status right now, Jim. I don't think we'll have them this week. And uh, after that, I think it's going to be a week-to-week -week deal. Uh, I, I hope to get them back soon. Uh, but that's a doctor's decision, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. And the problem is when they've been out as long as those two have been out, they need practice time before they're ready to play. Well, Wisconsin is the opener in the Big Ten Conference. Don't go away, everybody, because we'll be back and we'll take a look at the Big Ten Conference and the key players Michigan will face this year. That's next when Michigan Replay continues. The Big Ten Conference should again enjoy another very competitive year. And as always, the talent level is very high. Quarterbacks, running backs, and inside linebackers seem to dominate the league. And Michigan must see all of them during the year. Jeff George at Illinois is maybe the best pure passer the Big Ten has seen in years. And the Illini are very dangerous just because of his presence. Dave Schnell leads Indiana and is as good an all-around threat as anyone. And Ohio State's Greg Fry has improved. And at the end of last year, the Buckeye offense was very tough to stop. In the running backs department, the Thompsons have it. Indiana's Anthony Thompson is the Big Ten's returning leading rusher and a bona fide MVP candidate. At Minnesota, Daryl Thompson is just as good and always seems to have his best day against the Wolverines. Blake Ezor of Michigan State was the league's third best rusher last year, and despite suffering an injury against Notre Dame, he'll be a factor before the season ends. And Ohio State's Carlos Snow should not be overlooked. He's a small package, but a very dangerous back. At linebacker, the league's top three from last season are back. Michigan State's Percy Snow tackles everything in sight and is a butt-kiss award candidate. Derek Brownlow of Illinois led the league in tackles last season and is back for a return engagement. And Brad Quast continues to patrol the Iowa defense as he's done since he was a freshman. They were all conference first-teamers a year ago. And we shouldn't forget Minnesota's John Leverett, who would be an all-star first-team selection if he weren't in the same league as the other three. The charge from the defensive line is led by Spartan Travis Davis. He anchors one of the best units in the entire league. Mo Gardner at Illinois is another tackles for loss leader that came into his own last year. And Jeff Keppel of Iowa is another in a long line of Hawkeye standouts that have made an impact from the defensive front. In the secondary, Derek Kelson of Purdue returns, and all he did last year was lead the conference in breaking up passes. Zach Dumas of Ohio State keeps opposing receivers on it. Dumas was a second-team All-Big Ten selection a year ago. Marlon Primus of Illinois and Merton Hanks of Iowa are also very good and are leading the way into the conference honor roll this year. It isn't easy for the defensive backfield either, thanks to the likes of Chris Gators from Minnesota, who led the entire league in receiving last year, and he's back for an encore. If he isn't tough enough, Illinois' Stephen Williams and Purdue's Calvin Williams will make you worry. They are both very fast and capable of the big play at virtually any time, and they see the ball a great deal because of their big playability. The big tight ends in the league are led by Jeff Finke at Illinois. He's a very solid blocker, and he's a very steady receiver for the Jeff George Aerials. In the offensive line, Bob Kula of Michigan State is taking over very nicely for the graduated Tony Mandarich, and he's joined as one of the league's elite by Kurt Lovelace of Illinois, Bill Anderson of Iowa, and Jeff Davidson of Ohio State. The kickers in the conference are also very good. As a matter of fact, the top two scores from a year ago are back. Michigan State's John Langlow and Ohio State's Pat O'Mora were 1-2 in kick scoring. Michigan will see all of these great ones this season. And with Michigan State, Iowa, Minnesota, and Illinois on the road, it makes the Big Ten a virtual minefield of upsets for the Wolverines.
Oh, the Big Ten Conference is going to be a tough one. And you mentioned you got probably the toughest schedule of the bunch because you got the tough guys on the road. And it looks like Illinois and Michigan State, after the preseason non-conference schedule anyway, look like the teams that are going to be toughest. Well, first of all, um, we play all of the uh, Big Ten teams except Northwestern. And uh, that means that uh, we're playing all the real contenders. And we play most all of them on the road. That's Iowa, Illinois, and Michigan State. And then, of course, we have Ohio State at home in the last game. So our schedule is the toughest by far. And I believe that the only way that we can win the Big Ten Championship is to win every conference game. One of the things that you have to do also, and, and, and in the conference, is everybody is shooting at you because you're the defending champion. You'd mentioned that prior to playing Maryland, that we're going to get everybody's best shot. And that's something that adds to the little package. Historically, when we take the field, the opponent is going to give us the absolute maximum effort. And um, that's why we have to be good every week. If we're not, we're going to be in a dogfight and we're going to lose some games. And that means the Michigan Wolverines have to be good this week because they're going to meet Wisconsin in the Big Ten Conference opener. And the Wolverine players, along with Coach Schembechler, are ready. We needed this to, to get ready for the Big Ten. Offensively, it was a good game. They scored a lot of points. Defensively, we made a few errors uh, later on in the game, and we didn't play as well as we were capable of playing, but we're going to get it together for the Wisconsin game. Main component. What's the longest kickoff return in Michigan history? 99 yards. It was turned in by Dennis Fitzgerald versus Michigan State in 1960. Um, I didn't feel at that time they were that bad a defensive team. But um, I think it'll be tougher this year. And you've always liked Don Morton, their head coach. You think he's trying to get things going over I there and uh, I think he's, he's, he's beginning to make guy. progress. I think he's a classy guy. He took over a very difficult situation. You can't build a football program overnight. It takes a long time to do it, and uh, I think this is only his third year. I think he should have some time to work things out. And with that defense that's so good, and you still struggling a little bit with the rush, which you're not still happy with, it, it isn't a blowout that a lot of people are thinking. No. And the other thing is changing quarterbacks and going to the passing quarterbacks will only have really one opportunity to see them in film. Uh, and they were off, you know, this week, and so... Uh, they've got two weeks to prepare for us, and I'm sure they'll have something new. And that's going to be probably an advantage to them having that extra week. Oh, I think it will be because they, you know, they're, if you want to, if you want to really put in something new for an opponent, you, you, you'd like to have two weeks to prepare for them. So there's no question it's not going to be a cakewalk for the Wolverines. Be sure and join us next week on Michigan Replay when we take a look at the Wolverines and Badgers in the Big Ten opener of 1989. Uh, and then. Uh, Gerbeck comes right back and hits uh, McMurtry again. And you're going to the air because they've got the That's eighth right. man up on the ball. And they're showing us, uh, you know, and he comes right back here down the goal line, and McMurtry takes it on a, a post route for a touchdown. Players we talked to said that you checked run to pass. They did, huh? Uh-oh, they shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of checking going on in there, Jim. <laughs> Here we scramble again, and uh, Bobby Abrams does a great job of sacking the uh, quarterback. We had quite a few sacks there early, and then I thought our defense played extremely well early, and then later on I thought we... It's been your philosophy all your career, really. Well, right. When uh, Basically, if they bring the eighth man into the running game, you had better pass, and uh, most teams are going to attempt to do that. Uh, so we'll probably be passing early a lot more frequently. And the situation, you win the toss, decline the well, choice? Well, we, we deferred. Then... We deferred to the second half. Right, and the defense just yeah, gets it Bobby done. Abrams with a great sack. I thought he had some big plays for us early. And um, so then we finally get the ball with field position. This is the first play of the game. And Elvis throws out here to Chris Calloway, who oh, comes close to the Give me that full back off tackle. <laughs> Still an exciting three over Maryland. We'll also take a close up look at the Big Ten in our annual conference preview. And we'll have our scouting report on Wisconsin. All that and more coming up next. Everybody and welcome to Michigan Replay. The Wolverines beat Maryland 41-21. They finish up their non-conference record 2-1. And, and friends, I hate to tell you this, but Bo Schembechler has become a passing coach. That's right. 
You threw it all over the park today in the first half, and I'm a little disappointed in you personally. No kidding. That's right. After you've been brought up in the running game. And to watch you throw it all over the ballpark, I, I got to tell you, I almost <sighs> left the big play. You bet, and this one's even more exciting. This is Elvis throwing for the corner here to Chris Calloway for a touchdown, and uh, we take a 7 to nothing lead. And two out of the four plays are pass plays. You get in the end zone, have a 7 nothing lead, and the defense again comes up big. Well, they had, they, this is a third and 21. They hit a pass here. Fortunately, we got a good tackle and a fumble. Got the ball at midfield. Vader Murray caused the fumble. He's had, this is his second big game in a week, in two weeks. Well, that's true. He's, uh, he made some plays and uh, that really helped. Here's a uh, great camera angle uh, to Chris Galloway for a curl over the middle. Press box. There's a fundamental weakness here. That's right. And, uh, I'm trying to do something about it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Elvis Gerback out there throwing the ball and receivers like Greg McMurtry and Chris Calloway, I don't blame you. It's a way to get the ball to some very good players. Well, if the defense is going to um, gang up on you, and particularly on early downs, first down, not let you run the ball, I think you have no choice but to pass it. And fortunately, you know, uh, we can throw pretty decently, and we have excellent receivers. So it just stands to reason that that's the way we should have started the ball game, and that's the way we started it. And basically, taking what the defense gives you, and that's 